guys to all those crazy fantasy movies of the 80s, things like Kroll, Conan the Barbarian, Beastmaster, classics. Uh, to me, the only thing I thought was missing from those films was tons of marijuana, cuss words, and naked women. So we've tried to fill that gap here. Uh, if you are offended easily, I apologize now. Uh, get ready for a filthy time. Thanks for coming out here tonight. I appreciate it. Oh, is there such a thing as too many dick jokes? I don't think so. Um, dick. So, there we go. There we go. There we go. Sometimes it's a joke just by saying it. Exactly. Um, do you enjoy watching the film with other people, Danny? You know, I, I, I've seen this movie so many times that I just like to come in for certain parts and just see what people's reactions are to, uh, like when we jerk the wizard off, it's always, you can test the audience right there and see where they're at in the movie. Yeah. Not to litmus test that is. Um, when you were kind of uh, putting the film together, um, did you have any, any limits? Because, you, you know, the phrase, when we jerk the wizard off, is not a phrase you hear very often. Um, did you have any things you thought, that's too far? Uh, you know, because David Green, the director's out here, all the dirty stuff I'll just put on his shoulders. Everything uh -huh. that was filthy was his idea. It's his yeah, it's right? His you were there, right? I was there, man. Yeah. It's, it's his fault. <laughs> yeah. uh, oddly enough, it's so strange. We were given a lot of creative freedom. I don't know if it was because we were shooting in Belfast and it was too far of a flight for a lot of the executives <laughs> to, to come over, but they kind of let us go in the forest and do what we wanted to do. Yeah. Um, we did. So. <laughs> How long did it take to get the film made? Because I was like, you sort of had the idea of brewing for a, a long time. Yeah, the idea came... About two from, weeks. Yeah, it was about yeah, two yeah. weeks. Which is all in time. Yeah. 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 Two and a half weeks. Yeah. Uh, I went to film school with David, so I've known him for a long time, and I guess it was about ten years ago. David likes to play this game where he'll like give you the title of a movie, and then you have to kind of like quickly come up with what the movie's about. And so it was about ten years ago, and he was like... The name of the movie is Your Highness, What's It About? It's like, I don't know, uh, about a prince who gets stoned and fights dragons. And so it was just sort of a joke that we kind of had thrown away. But then as the years went on, we would kind of come back to it and flesh it out more and more. And then the next thing you know, you end up with like an Academy Award winning actress and uh, Academy nominated actor in this joke that we made up a long time ago. <laughs> I don't really have any idea of what could possibly come next. And it was funny to do that. I mean, Rasmus falls into it easily, but then you get guys like Charles Dance and yeah. you try to throw something, you know, nasty at him and he just kind of looks at you just like, what are we doing? What, yeah. Is this really what I've been hired to do? Yeah. Yeah. Dance comes in the corner on the phone to his agent. I don't really know what's going on. Yeah. I just want a script. <laughs> But that was that was the fun part, I, I think, for all of us, you know, because we we had such free reign because these guys created it. It was their baby, and it was just it was it was fun to be as ridiculous as possible and not be looked at, you know, like a shit actor, which you know. Um, but it, it was really nice to to be given that leeway and and to go nuts because we had a lot to work with, you know, and it, it, we. We could basically just have a structure, and then uh, you know, David would say, "Okay, guys, this is what you're doing um, today. You're getting raped by a minotaur. Um, <laughs> that's all you need to know. Uh, you can just pretty much go nuts with it like that." And I think, I think it worked. I, you know, I, I, I think, I think the gut, the gut reaction is is often times the best, and and that shone through in in, in the film, definitely, hundred percent. Yeah, and like sometimes really big story points would end up being improv. Like for instance, that scene with uh, James and myself with that puppet with the wizard. That scene was pretty cut and dry. It was just like exposition about what we had to do in this quest. And there was like two guys underneath the bed operating the puppet, and one of the puppeteers was like voicing him from under the bed. And just in one of the takes, James started inventing the story that he had come here when he was a kid and he would take his shirt off. And then the puppeteer just started going with it and was telling me not to tell anyone. And so that whole deal with the, you know, that James was possibly molested was improv. So yeah, right. before you know it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> It just gets carried away. Um, I think uh, maybe take some questions from uh, from these lovely people. Uh, there are microphones around. I can't see them, but I'm sure they are here. Um, shout, shout, but put your hand up first. Yeah, that is really yeah, yeah. what we did there. Yeah, we threw some eggs. We threw some eggs at, at people. That was fun. Yeah, we egged people too. Yeah, there, I lived across the street from a nightclub, and uh, and at nighttime you would come out at like two in the morning, and it just looked like it was dawn of the dead, just drunk people stumbling <laughs> outside. And so Rasmus would egg them. Yeah, and, and unprovoked. And Danny actually threw uh, a snooker ball at one of them, and he died. So. <laughs> It's not a big deal. Don't, don't tell us. Yeah. Uh, from the press point of view, it was a hard ball day. <laughs> uh, next, next hand. What about the back here? 
Uh, what happened to the minor talkiness? <laughs> Mm. Uh, I have that. I own that. Uh, <laughs> David, the director, gave it to me as a rap gift, and he, uh, he, I. So it's like in the trunk of my car. My wife won't let me bring it into the house. And, uh, <laughs> and one day, I actually was like checking into a hotel, and I. So that's why she stays in the car. Yeah. <laughs> she lives in the trunk. Uh, I was like checked into a hotel, and I completely had forgotten that it was back there, and I had my suitcase back there, and the valet guy came over to like help me get my bags out of the trunk. <laughs> Huge severed dick in the back. <laughs> shared a, we shared a weird moment there. <laughs> uh, next time. Sound here. What will be next project? Uh, you know, right now we're uh, I, I, with David and uh, my other buddy Jody Hill. We do this show. He's found down for HBO, so we're writing that the, the next season. Right now. Oh, thank you. And we'll shoot that next, and then this summer there's a movie coming out called 30 Minutes or Less that Ruben Fleischer, who directed Zombieland, uh, directed him in that and said, like, Aziz and Zari and Jesse Eisenberg, and it's like a, a bank heist movie. This instance revolting or, or just plain, you know, straight and funny, then it does become a pissing contest of who can make it. It does. Yeah. And David usually is the one to, is the one who would crack the most. Yes. He would, uh, <laughs> so it's like usually like trying to just get him to ruin takes. That's always like what <laughs> yeah, the yeah, goal yeah, is. Yeah. And he would bring it a lot as well. I mean, he's, his mind uh, is. I don't, yeah, I, I mean, it works in strange ways, and he he brought a lot to the table with that. He, he would say, there's, there's, there was one, um, I remember on, on one of the first days um, in, in, in the scene where, just after we first meet Isabel, and, he's, and, uh, and, and um, Thaddeus is saying, with our huge muscles, we will protect you. And the line is, um, who protect what? And, and David said, call him a potato. And Natalie was like, who protects what potato? You are a potato. And he was just staying on the side and calling a potato. You know, just like, that's pretty much how it works. That's how it works. Speaking about this sort of uh, slightly warped minds, whose idea was the, um, the five-headed Hydra hand monster controlled by a hand in but not necessarily like we didn't want it to like uh, exist in this place where like it looked like it was cheap and you know to us it, w it worked better if it looked like it was big so we had to figure out ways to kind of stretch everything and with that creature I think originally that was supposed to be like this giant earthworm and then the guys at frame store who we did did all the visual effects they told us that like moist you know, skin is like the is like the most expensive, hardest texture to make. So, we're like, well, what's the cheapest texture? And they're like, you know, <laughs> our like reptilian scales are a little easier to do. And, and then I can, if you have something with multiple heads, you know, we can just make one head and duplicate those, and so that can give you even more scope. So we kind of just that was kind of like the, the idea of like, okay, well, that sounds scary as shit. Let's just do that. <laughs> And, and then the hand thing, I think, just kind of evolved from that of like, well, if it looks like a hand, like maybe it should, that should, you know, that should connect somehow. And so, well, maybe it's his hand, and you know, there you go. Yeah, you Again, know, like the like the Natalie kissing thing. He's got. <laughs> <laughs> it, to us, it was just one of those deals of like kind of falling in line with like making that movie that you'd want to see when you were 13 years old, and that's the kind of girls I wanted to see in those films, you know, and they were. It was the best week of shooting, I think, right? That, that was fun. Drew was, was, was very happy yeah. that whole entire week of shooting. Yeah. Not a lot of work was done that way, I have to say. Hey, Come on. You, you talked about making the most of uh, the budget of this film. Now, I've just come off a, a film set, but I'm more interested in post-production. What would you give any advice to stretching things and highlighting things? Who said that? I couldn't see. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's <laughs> a looking man of man, it. It's like your lip. <laughs> man. Uh, you know what I mean? I guess it all probably comes down to just collaborating. You know, we we were lucky to work with Frame Store, who's who's based here in London, and those guys were really brilliant. And you know, we just they were well aware of what our limitations were. So we just you know were sort of collaborators in the fact that we would just put our heads together of how we could just stretch that money as far as we could. And you know, I mean, I think. Those guys obviously knew how knew what was capable more than we did, so it was good to just sort of trust their vision and, and trust that they were shooting us right.